Welcome to the Rewriting Naruto series part 6, a series of videos where I rewrite Naruto making changes to improve the series for my personal taste. This is only part 6 of this very long series, so definitely subscribe so you never miss any rewrite videos. Like this video as well to support the channel and the series, and today's like goal is going to be 400 likes. If we get over 400 likes within 24 hours of the video's upload, I'll drop the next rewrite within a week. If you'd like to further support the channel, become a member and get awesome perks, link in the description. Alright, we begin with Hinata sparring with her dad in the Hyuga Dojo. He's being very harsh to her, telling her to push herself further and Hinata seems to be at her limit sweating balls. Hiyashi lands a powerful blow on her. She falls down, and Hiyashi says, Stand up, girl. You must become as powerful as your cousin. My brother sacrificed his life for the main Hyuga branch. I'm not letting his sacrifice go to waste with such a weak heir. You have to become more powerful. Hiyashi has become more appreciative of Neji and his brother after what happened in the tuning exams, but now he wants to live up to his brother, making sure that his daughter will be powerful enough to lead the Hyuga clan one day, and of course, he is being far too demanding with Hinata. She can barely stand up after that powerful blow. Hiyashi says, disappointed and angry, Get out of my sight, girl. You better get stronger. Naruto's words flash through Hinata's mind. I won't give up. This is my ninja way. Hinata manages to move and get into combat stance, readying herself to resume the brutal sparring they're undergoing. But a voice interrupts her. I could train her. Hiyashi sama it's Neji who just arrived at the dojo Hiyashi looks at him and says well I don't think that's a bad idea after all you master the gentle fist and the rotation by yourself Hinata looks at Neji apprehensive flashes of her last fight against him pass through her mind and her body language gives away that she is very scared we cut to Danzo who is at the Hokage's office staring out of the window overlooking the village he is speaking to the two village elders. So, has the daimyo ratified my position as the fifth Hokage? The elders reply, it will be done soon. We just have to take care of the bureaucracy first. Danzo says, good. Things will finally change in this village. The elders motion to leave the room, saying, we have to take care of other matters now about the destruction involving the recent attack against the village. We'll be back soon with the paperwork you have to fill in for the daimyo. Danzo smiles. Still staring out of the window, his back facing the office door. We now see Naruto running around the village, offering his help in fixing houses and other buildings that were damaged during Orochimaru's attack. No one accepts his help. The village still despises Naruto, and after the Nine Tails display in the tuning exams, they seem to be even more hostile towards him. However, when Naruto's stomach growls, he heads towards Ichiraku to have some good old ramen. As he arrives there, he sees that the small restaurant was heavily damaged during the attack. The old man and the pretty lady who own the place are working very hard to fix it. Naruto says, Old man! Need a hand there? Teuchi, Ichiraku's owner, says, Naruto, that'll be great. Naruto uses the Shadow Clone Jutsu, creating five clones and saying, I have some experience fixing buildings, you know? Did that on a mission once, believe it. We then see that Naruto is actually very helpful to Teuchi and the girl doing his best to repair Ichiraku. It seems like the owners of Ichiraku are one of the only people in the village who like Naruto, and Naruto is more than happy to help them. I think this is a nice moment for Naruto to help in the repair of the iconic restaurant that he loves so much. Also, that crap with Konohamaru and Naruto losing his Ichiraku voucher is all anime filler. It really tanks the pacing and it doesn't do anything for the story, so I'm trying to do something different and more meaningful here. It really tanks the pacing and it doesn't do anything for the story, so I'm trying to do something different and more meaningful here. We cut to Sasuke. He is laying on his bed. Not bedridden, but very tired and feeling pain all over his body. It seems like 
like the curse mark has taken a heavy toll during his fight against Gara. Still, he thinks about the power boost he gained from it, how it felt almost intoxicating, consuming him, and he also remembers Orochimaru saying that he could give more power to Sasuke, power he desperately needs. We cut back to Hinata and Neji, they're about to start sparring. Both of them have their Byakugan activated. Hinata though looks absolutely scared. Neji says, I'm sorry Lady Hinata for what I did and said in the preliminaries, that was wrong. Hinata is surprised after hearing that. Neji says, that Naruto, huh? He really has a way with words. Hinata blushes after hearing Naruto's name, but he's right, no one is tied to their destiny and everyone can trace their own path. My father knew that and it just took me longer to understand it. Hinata says with relief and glad that Neji has undergone a change of heart, I'm sorry Neji for what happened to you, but if I can do anything to... Neji cuts her and says, what I want is for you to get stronger. I hate seeing you being treated like that by your father. I feel like I inadvertently caused it, so it's my responsibility to make sure you get strong. That's also what my father would have wanted. Now, show me your stance. Hinata does so, and they both start to spar. We cut to Danzo as he hears the door behind him opening. He is still staring at the village with a grin on his face, and says, Back already? Have you the paperwork? There's no response. For a couple of seconds, the room is completely quiet. Danzo then, finding that strange, turns around and sees something that absolutely terrifies him. The audience, however, doesn't see what Danzo sees. They only see Danzo's terrified expression. A day passes, and Naruto arrives at Ichiraku early in the morning to resume the repairs. Tiuchi says, We should be done by noon, and uh, then I'll make you a very special bowl of ramen on the house, Naruto. Naruto smiles in excitement, then I'll double my efforts. We also get a shot from the village, and we we can see a glimpse of the two Akatsuki robes walking with the crowd. We cut back to Naruto as the repairs at Ichiraku are finished. We see at a distance that Hinata was watching them repair the restaurant and she was paying very close attention to Naruto with her Byakugan activated. She has bandages all over her body because of the intense sparring she did yesterday. Tiuchi invites Naruto into the restaurant and starts to make him some ramen. Hinata sees that and swallows. She clenches her fists and summons the courage to approach Naruto. We cut to Jiraiya spying on the bathhouses with his spyglass, and then we get the same scene where the elders offer Jiraiya the fifth Hokage position. The scene goes exactly the same with one addition. Jiraiya when offered the position says, well I thought Danzo was gonna take it, and the elders reply, Danzo got cold feet at the last second. I'm afraid you are our best option for now. And then the scene resumes exactly the same way it did in the original. Hinata takes a seat next to Naruto in Ichiraku. Naruto is spooked by her. She was extremely quiet while she sat down and approached Naruto, so much so that he didn't notice her until she spoke. Naruto-kun, good job on the exams. Naruto, spooked and a little confused, says, Oh, Hinata, yeah, thanks. You know, you helped me a lot down there. You gave me the strength to continue fighting. Hinata blushes and says, I only did what you did for me. You know, when you cheered me on in the preliminaries, I felt like I became stronger than before. And when the preliminaries were over, I started to like myself just a little bit more. From the outside, I might not seem different, but I think I've changed. Naruto, it's all because of you. At least that's what I think. Naruto opens a warm smile and says, Wow, because of me? I guess I'm an awesome influence. But, you know, I screw up so much, I don't think you should be taking me as an example for anything. Hinata says, That's not true. And even if you mess up, if you ask me, you're a proud failure. You're really inspiring to watch because you're not perfect and because you make mistakes and still you have the guts to get back up and keep fighting. That's what you taught me, Naruto, and... That's what I consider true strength. I believe you are an incredible person, Naruto. Naruto says, Thanks, Hinata. You know what I thought about you? Hinata blushes even more. No, what did you think? Well, I thought you were some sort of weirdo. Dark and plain and timid. But actually, I think I kind of like folks like you. Hinata averts her gaze, grinning and blushing. She's obviously happy. A little taken aback by Naruto's statements, but still happy. And that's essentially the scene we got before Naruto fought Neji 
Luigi in the tuning exams when he talked to Hinata, but I moved it up here and I also added some stuff as well, because I just think it fits better, Hinata having the strength to go approach Naruto, and also, as I mentioned in the previous part, having that scene before and making Naruto not doubt himself was something I didn't like in the original. Naruto smiles, looks at her and says, So, uh, do you like ramen? Hinata looks up with a radiant expression as she is about to answer him, but she is interrupted. Hinata! What are you doing here? Hiyashi Hyuga pulls her by her coat, yanking her out of her Ichiraku seat. Naruto immediately gets up and says, Who do you think you are manhandling her like that? Hiyashi looks at Naruto in contempt. Her father. And you, Hinata, you'll go back to sparring and training. Naruto says, No! She'll enjoy some ramen! Give her a break! Hinata says, Naruto, it's, it's alright. I have to go back to training. He's right. Yeah, she says, and you, boy, you won't be talking with my daughter ever again, understand? The Hyuga clan doesn't associate itself with demons. Hinata snaps at that. No, I will be talking to him as I damn well please, father. You can take everything away from me, but this, I won't let you take my friends from me. Hinata's crying, but she has a determined expression on her face. She says, I'm sorry, Naruto. Maybe we can have ramen another time. She jumps away, leaving Naruto and her father behind. Hiyashi looks at Naruto and says, And you stay away from her. Naruto stares back at him and says, Oh yeah? Why don't you make me? They stare at each other for a long moment. And then Jiraiya arrives, diffusing the situation as Hiyashi respects Jiraiya enough not to mess with Naruto in front of him. Now that I added this stuff to the beginning of the Search for Tsunade arc, I'll only only make a couple more changes to the arc itself. First, when Sasuke goes to the Uchiha district to read the Uchiha stone tablet in this arc, it's not as easy as just going down a hidden ladder. He has to go deep down the bowels of the district, and then he reaches a powerful chakra barrier. He activates his Sharingan in front of the barrier, and the barrier recognizes his Uchiha chakra and his Sharingan. The seal of the barrier is temporarily lifted, allowing Sasuke Sasuke to enter the Uchiha stone tablet chamber. Within the chamber, there is much more than just the stone tablet. There are exotic weapons, scrolls, artifacts, one of which is a white horn, devilish looking mask. I'm making the stone tablet hall much more secure than it was in the original for foreshadowing purposes. I am foreshadowing the Reaper Death Seal mask here and some other things as well. And I'm also including the scene to give off the actual importance of the Uchiha stone tablet. However, there's another difference. Once Sasuke reads the tablet and also other scrolls and documents lying around the chamber, his expression is of complete shock. And this will be important later. Itachi's actions will remain the same during the arc. Some people think they don't make sense in hindsight, but they actually do. He had a pretty elaborate plan that I covered in this video right here if you want to know more about Itachi's moves when he infiltrated Konoha. Link in the description. So, I'm not changing anything about Itachi because I just think his appearance and his fights in this arc are amazing. And one of the best things in part one, to be honest. And the entire series. Also, in the anime when Itachi uses his Mangekyo, it appears just as a regular Sharingan. In the manga, his MS is actually hidden at all times, so we don't actually see Itachi's eyes when he uses the Mangekyo. So yeah, that was another anime mistake. Kishima to hit Itachi's Sharingan because he hadn't finalized the design of Itachi's MS at that time, but I think it works great actually. We don't see Itachi's eyes when he's doing those crazy stupidly OP powers, which makes them even more terrifying if you ask me, and I like that the actual reveal of the MS design is through Sasuke's perspective in his flashbacks, so no need to change any of that. The last change I'm making to the Search for Tsunade arc is just something that would naturally happen because of the nature of this rewrite. The fourth Hokage is mentioned a lot during this arc, 
Mark, who Naruto is traveling with Jiraiya, and as in the rewrite, Naruto knows the fourth Hokage was his dad, of course he would react differently when the fourth Hokage is brought up in conversation and all that. This wouldn't change the story per se, but you can imagine Naruto's reactions would be much more filled with emotion when anyone talks about the fourth Hokage, seeing that he has a lot of problems with his dad because he sealed a demon inside of him. This would also work as further motivation for Naruto to master the Rasengan, a jutsu his father developed and took three years to do so, so that Naruto can prove to himself, to his father and to the world and Tsunade as well that he is a great ninja and also worthy of being called the son of a Hokage. The scene when Naruto first meets Tsunade in that bar will be the first time he ever defends the fourth Hokage, because Tsunade was bad-mouthing the Hokage and the fourth Hokage as well really bad, and Naruto gets pissed by it, he lunges trying to punch her, so even though he defaces the Hokage statues and says all those crappy things about the Hokages, including his dad, especially his dad, when push comes to shove, he really respects and admires them, which compels him to defend their honor when Tsunade says all those bad things about the Hokage. The rest of the arc remains the same. It's a very solid arc that I think is very much overlooked. Definitely go read it again if you haven't in a while, and if you haven't read it in the manga, it's actually much better in the manga because there's actually a lot of filler in this arc, which kind of annoys me, but it is great in the manga. My favorite parts are Naruto landing his first Rasengan and Tsunade's arc itself. The arc ends with Naruto, Jiraiya, Tsunade and Shizune returning to Konoha after fighting Orochimaru and Kabuto. Tsunade on her way to become the fifth Hokage. Subscribe to this channel and please like the video if you enjoyed it. Let's reach 400 likes, okay? Watch part 7 right here if it's already out, and also comment below what you thought about the changes I made and leave any suggestions you may have. Thanks for watching!